Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards and today I bring you a keyboard that I have been waiting patiently for for some time. Unfortunately, every once in a while a package gets caught in customs. I don't know what it is they're doing, but this one should have reached me probably about a week ago. But it is now here and I'm excited to finally bring it to you. Now, I know I have several boxes here, but I'm hiding the prize underneath. This is the new keyboard from Nufi Studios. It is the Gem 80. It's a VIA QMK keyboard. It's a TKL. It has a few really cool features. Um, they were kind enough, actually, to send me over. Uh, I'm guessing these are all plates. I've only opened up this box so far. I was worried about it being crushed, but thankfully what's inside did not get damaged. I do believe this comes already with the FR4 plate, but they've also sent me over the PC plate, the palm plate, and the aluminum plate. So it looks like I'm going to be busy building and rebuilding here a couple of times because I'd like to go ahead and give you guys an impression of what these all sound like. But first and foremost... Let's do the unboxing. Now, I got to say, I've never had switches come in a box this big. And now these are the mint switches and they are linear. I have requested the, um, the tactile switches, but I do have some of the baby raccoons from the Halo series. And I might try those um, in another build. But today, we're just going to work with what we've got and see what we have. Um, I haven't really paid attention to any of the other reviews because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to have any preordained ideas in my head of what this is going to be. So I want to do like I do with most of my keyboards, go ahead and open it on screen and get to it so that we can find out together about this product. First things first, let's go ahead and open up the keyboard. I'm going to set these to the side for the moment so that they don't interfere. And as you can see, we have a normal profile. Uh, Nufi started with um, Nufi started making low pro profile keyboards. Uh, they did have the Test 68, which was a neon version of the Tester 68. But uh, they started first off with the low profiles, and then they moved into the Halo series, which was extremely popular. I still have my Halo 96 in rotation. Um, one of my kids took the 65, the other one took the 75. They love it. Um, I, I still do take it back to them every once in a while when they're at school and use it. But... So we went ahead and got the, um, I believe this is the MOV version. And it looks like they are working with Rio Studio. So it's Nufi and Rio Studio. And based on the fact that every time a new keyboard has come out from them, it always makes they always seem to improve upon the last one so i'm expecting some good things from this keyboard hopefully i won't be disappointed i don't think i will but you know we never know so go ahead and take off the sleeve if it wants to come off it is no it's stuck oh it's got a piece of tape on it never mind all right and this tells us what's inside We've got the Gem 80 keyboard kit. We have a USB-C data cable, the 2.4 gigahertz receiver, the keycap and switch puller. We have three extra switches, five silicone sets, one screwdriver, one extra set of foot pads, a quick guide, a Q&A or FAQ, and the installation guide. All right. Sounds to be pretty complete, but do they have switches in here? And did they include some extra ones for me? Let's see. So far, I'm really liking the presentation. The box is a very thick cardboard, very sturdy. Um, and the presentation, oh, yeah, that this is nice. So we have the quick guide, which gives us the um, side light. Oh, it's got side lights. I wasn't aware of that. See, I try to, as little as possible. I mean, I know enough about Nufi. I've been working with them for a while. They're a great group of 
guys. Um, they're, they're a great team over there. Um, they've always been very attentive, not only to creators, but especially to customers. Um, and their Discord server is very good for seeking support if you have any issues. But we have all of the um, different settings. I have not even looked into the uh, QMK source, but they are listing this QMK. Back when uh, the Halo series came out, I was like, you guys got to get on the QMK train. Oh, well, this keyboard doesn't have the QMK MCU. I'm like, well, what about the next keyboard you do? Why don't you just use it? I mean, it's only like a buck or two more. And they were like, well, we're going to run that by the team. I'd like to believe that <laughs> I was one of many voices that helped them to see the light, per se, because I'm a Linux guy. So anything that's QMK via is right up my alley. So we've got a nice installation guide. So, oh, this is a poster, a build out. All right, we will, we might refer to this. We might just go crazy and do it without looking. But come on, RTFM. We have a Q&A, which is a FAQ basically. About connections, Bluetooth, check the level of the battery. And we'll go over all of this in time. So that, oh, that's actually a little, I like that. It's a nice little packet with all the instructions. So I kind of wish it closed up on its own, but I guess it's just meant to go right back to the box. We have some pretty dense foam in here. Oh, nice. We've got it wrapped in a baby blanket sized microfiber cloth. Uh, oh, it is well wrapped. It's, it's been uh, cradled like a baby. Whoa. All right, I think those... Oh, this guy came loose. This is magnetic badge. And it looks like the three extra switches are a different kind. I got the mint, which is a light linear. These are... I can't remember the name of these other two. And a little heavier linear, and this one's a tactile. South-facing PCB. Um, looks like we've got a reset button there. That might be a reset button. That could be the mode button. Let me get into it before I figure that out. We do have... Oh, yep. Those are screw-in stabilizers. Very nice. It is a... Uh, very interesting build. Just like the Halo series, we have an aluminum top, though I gotta say this one feels a bit more substantial. We have switches here at the bottom for Windows mode and Mac mode. It comes already in Mac. And then we have power, USB, or two, USB 2.0 wired and wireless. Let's see if we put it in wireless. All right, the first lights that come on are these, and you're like, hmm, why are the home keys lighting up? We will see shortly why that is. All right. And then we have toolbox. I got to say, I do like how this is packed. Oh, we've got a nice mint cable, I guess, to match the uh, mint switches. Oh, and look at this. Oh, now this is nice. There's the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. Of course, it says Snoofy, and it actually has uh, some... Um, design language from the uh, Halo series with those ridges, but I love that they put Nufi on there. There's no way that it's going to be like, what does this go to? Because we're going to know exactly that it goes to a Nufi. I would have liked to see a pocket on here, but I could see how that might have affected the lines. So I'm not going to complain. I'm going to put it back there so I don't lose it. We have a nice uh, multi-tool. This is standard size bits, so they will fit just fine in most of your electric drivers. We have a Nufi branded switch and keycap puller. I gotta say that's interesting design. I like that it has a little bit of a ridge here so you can at least get some grip and it looks like it's already been opened up for us. Now here's something that I find very interesting and I can say I don't think too many keyboards have this. 
So it looks like we have different mounting styles and here is the top mount screws as well as the bit um, and not really washers, but more so spacers. And that has a hardness of 70. Then we have silicone beans. I'm not sure if they go into the plate or if they go into the PCB. This may be able to go plateless, but we will find out when we get in there. We have a silicone sock, which has a hardness of 70. Now, usually the harder it is, it's going to be more of a deeper tone, but that's not always the case. And then we have a hardness 70 silicone bean 10. These are hardness 30. So obviously, we're going to have a much softer feel with these than we are with these. These are going to be more rigid. So I got to say, I love that these are included. Um, and we will see once we get in there. Oh, and let me not forget, there's another set. So we've got silicone socks. We've got the, I call them tadpoles, but I guess they're calling them um, beans. Tadpole bean. Then we have silicone strips for gasket mount, uh, gasket mounting, I would assume. And then we have the extra feet that are color matched. Very nice, very nice indeed. This is what I mean when I say a baby blanket of a microfiber cloth. I gotta say, I like it. <laughs> definitely gonna help keep the keyboard clean. Um, it may not be a dust cover, but you can definitely use it as one. But we've got a nice steady weight to it. I gotta say, I love the transparency on the bottom, the logo. I love the, the touch of the gold screws in there. The switches are almost invisible, so they basically do not interfere with the lines of the keyboard at all. But it just has lovely profile. And I gotta say, I, this is nice. I, it was hard for me to pick the color, and I decided to go with something a little bit more neutral, though I am kind of... I do lean towards the retro, and this reminded me of the retro beige. Um, so, all right. Now, let's check out the switches. Mint, 36, 37 grams of force. Normal profile keys. Oh, because they're not low profile. That's why. I was like, keys? These are switches. Oh. One of those boxes. I mean, this is a presentation. I mean, they they one up a couple of companies in as far as their switch switches go because this is um, this is pretty complete. And I mean, the packaging on this is definitely top notch. But I've always noticed that Nufi is very good at paying attention to details. And you know what they say, the devil's in the details. All right. Took a second to get in here. A nice liner card. Wow, a little bit of foam keeping each of the switches in place. Well, we definitely will have some extra switches, but I don't complain about that. So, uh, let me go set these aside for a moment until we actually need them. And let's check out their PBT keycaps. Of course, they are color matching. Uh, these are, uh, look to be like a brown on white. Um, let's see a name for them. So, they're Cosmic Mocha. They're double shot PBT and they're in the MSA profile. Anything in the SA family is good with me. It says obsidian black here. Don't know what that actually applies to. Hmm. Gem series keycaps. All right, so we've got two trays here and they're protected by a card. Now you noticed how we had the home keys and the arrow key light up and this is why. Because there's actually a little window on the home keys. 
and allow it to shine through. And we'll take a look at it once we build it. I wonder though if they have home keys without it, just out of curiosity that I gotta say, I do like that little touch. These keycaps are really nice. They have a nice texture to them. The legends are nice and clean. They have a little bit of a curve to them. And they are all in all caps, which I like. And I love the fact that the letter, the legends for the keycaps are centered for the alphas. That is a good thing, in my book anyway. I'm going to guess these are 1.5 or 1.6 thickness. Let's see how good I am. Oh, I was almost there. They're 1.7. These are probably the thickest keycaps that come. Well, they don't come. This is an addition to, but I suspect we're going to have a very thocky build just to start out with, with the FR4 plate, and we'll get to see the differences, but this nice, tall, sculpted keycap with that thick body, I think is going to deliver us some nice tones. Let's see what the other tray has to offer us. All right. So it does look like we have a full keycap set. We have both the uh, Mac keys as well as the uh, Windows keys. Huh. We even have numpad keys, even though we don't have a numpad. But if we wanted to match a numpad here, we could do that. We have an escape key with sublegends on it. And it looks like we have oh, an alternate F6. Because these are, those are the Macintosh commands. Wait a minute. I thought there was a window key. There isn't. We have command opt alt control command function. Huh. Am I just blind? We have an extra B in case we want to load these up on a Alice. That looks like the uh, right click for the super on the right hand side but hmm. i guess uh we could also we could go ahead and just use command um since we're going to be in windows mode we even have an iso iso keys hmm. i'm just honestly i'm i'm kind of just surprised that there is no windows key or at least you know code or super because i know this i mean it has a windows and mac switch so where's the windows key not that that's that big of a deal but just would be nice i'm going to go ahead and load up the switches and then we're going to load up the keycaps and do our first of several sound tests since we do have four plates to deal with, we're probably going to take a little while. But let me go ahead and pull these out. That's a light to medium tactile with probably 45, 42 grams. They're all on the lighter side. So if you guys like heavier switches, doing a spring swap for something heavier will probably work. So we do have the stabilizers. They're already nice and lubricated. Yep. We have a ghost bar. Just like I have. Oh, right here. These are the aftermarket. They sold quite a few of these. But this space bar makes a big difference when it comes to the sound. Oh, and they also have, I forgot to mention... We have the IXPE, thankfully, with the holes already punched out, as well as the PET layer, and we can see the plastic above the LED. So we're probably going to have a nice poppy sound on here, but let's go ahead and put on the space bar. Oh, helps if I actually get the switch in all the way. I'm sorry. Were you touching the space bar? Because I don't hear it. <laughs> 
oh yeah, this is going to lend itself to some very thocky goads. That is nice. I gotta say, that is really nice. Oh, that's the same green almost. The case itself weighs just under 1,100 grams. So, 1.1 kilograms. Nice. It's solid and sturdy, but it's not like, oh, I can't put that in my bag. It's too heavy. Some nice tolerances on the plate. These are going in nice and easy. We do have a frosted green top for where the SMD window is. So I'm hoping that that doesn't interfere with the color that much. We'll have to see once we get there. And here we are with the switches all loaded up. Uh, I gotta say, at first I was like, why the colorful switches and the different colors from for the uh, cases? But I gotta say, it's actually, in my opinion, it's a nice aesthetic. I mean, obviously, we're not really going to be seeing the switches on a regular basis, but I, I kind of like the contrast that they give. It's, um, it's striking. One thing, though, I've got to say that I, I find kind of odd is that we have an alternate layout on this keyboard and it's with the caps lock. We can do a stepped or normal cap. We can do both a stepped cap lock or normal cap lock, but the kit doesn't include a stepped cap lock. Why would they not include that? But uh, And I'm still kind of baffled why there's no windows or super key, um, but they have a numpad key. I wonder if they're planning a either a full or an 1800, 96%. And that's why they have these like this. But I, I got to say, I'm, I'm honestly baffled that we don't have a Windows key. And that we don't have a step cap slot. Because I like this key cap set. I probably will keep it on here for a little while. But I, I like, I prefer a step cap slot. It's just one of my things but it's neither here nor there it's not that big of a deal i have plenty of keycap sets with step caps lock but if i want to stick to the keycaps that come with this well i'll i don't know i didn't see an extra caps lock or a step caps lock available for purchase so just kind of curious about that i'll ask them next time i get a chance i'm gonna go ahead and load up the keycaps uh with the standard layout for right now and I'm, I guess I'm going to use the uh, command key as the windows key but not that that's that big of a deal obviously I know what it is <laughs> but let's go ahead and load it up with this I gotta say very retro and very calming very pleasing at least to me um, colorway and 1.7 I mean oh yeah this is going to sound real nice stock. So let me go ahead and get these loaded up. And here we are with the Gem 80 in mauve, fully built. Um, I don't really find it as an issue, but I'm just I'm honestly more curious than anything. I like the novelties, obviously, that's print screen, that scroll lock. Not sure how that represents pause, but um, I always like novelties included. But I also like that if they're going to include novelties, they should also include just the standard keys. And not having a caps lock, a step caps lock, as well as a Windows or Super or Code key. Um, I think they're just kind of missing the boat on that, but that's neither here nor there. That's more nitpicky than anything else. This keyboard sounds so nice. Stock, I mean, obviously I built it, but these are all with stock components. I haven't touched anything. It has a creamy box to it. Um, with a hint of Mahjong tiles in it. 
Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, I got it like that. So we do have a magnetic badge here. I do wonder if they have other colors. I did not notice that, but they might have some coming. But you can see the magnet there. <laughs> kind of goes down at an angle. But that is really nice. I've reviewed some interesting keyboards. I'm close to 700 videos right now, but that's roughly... <sighs> Last time I did my list, I think I was at 338, but that was a while ago. So I'm probably closer to the 350 mark right now as far as keyboards that I've reviewed. But in the last few months, I have reviewed some lovely keyboards. This one definitely is at the top of that list. Why? It has a unique design with the top aluminum frame. So we still get that nice feel of steel. I know it's aluminum, but you know, that nice cold metal feel and it gives us that substantiality but then we have a nice translucent bottom which you know has that tint similar to the color of the case um we do have a step cap lock i'm i'm weird like that i love the step caps lock because first 10 years of keyboards i had that's how the caps lock were so this to me is foreign in my mind and in my my soul the caps lock should all be stepped. That's why I made a video on how to modify a step caps lock to work on a regular keyboard. Um, a little bit of work, but I mean, if you're not going to use the step caps lock anyway, but you'd like to give it a shot, it's pretty easy. You literally just get some side clippers, clip it at the base of the stem, move it over, line it up to where, I mean, use a standard key, uh, caps lock so that you can put the keys right next to each other and then line it up to where it's in the same position. I mean, obviously you want to make sure it's right horizontally, but that it's in the same position vertically with the, um, the post. It's going to be basically in the center of the keycap in order for it to work and then use super glue and baking soda to attach it. Leave it alone for uh, a few hours. It doesn't take long. And then make sure that the stem doesn't move and you've got yourself step caps lock. So that's why I figured out how to do that because I was like, I want step caps lock. And most of the keycap sets I have have step caps lock, but very few keyboards have this. Now this is a custom keyboard. Having all the plates, having the different choices of the colors. Um, they also have some, I use Nufi um, wrist rest almost exclusively because I really like how they're made. They have some really nice ones, and I think I'm going to have to pick up a few. Because if you'll go back and notice all of my sound tests, they're always the Nufi Studio ones. And I really, I just, I dig these. These are just nice, the acrylic, and they work with practically any keyboard except low profiles. But they, they even have a low profile one, which I have over there. Um... I've got to say, on first impressions, this is definitely a lovely um, custom keyboard. You can choose you know, different color of the cases. You have four different plates you can go with. You can choose different. They have different sets of keycaps as well, as well as completely shine through keycaps. Um, you have a badge. There's a lot of customization on top. I mean, you can do a top mount. You can do different type of gasket mount. I mean, this one, I'm not sure what it has as the... Um, default I guess we'll find out when we get in there but it has flex it doesn't have much I kind of like a little bit harder than softer but that's me I know a lot of people prefer bounce we obviously have foam in here that I like foam I mean sometimes foam doesn't doesn't sound good in my keyboard but most of the times it, it helps to I think even out the noise to where there's more uniformity and it's more pleasing. And I know that some people are like, oh, but that's how it sounds like with all the foam. It's like, well, that's how it was designed. So, but I know some people like it without the foam and that's, that's fine. There are some keyboards that sound really nice without foam. There's some keyboards that sound different without foam, but it's a personal preference. And I just, 
I'm just not a fan of KDCP. This this hobby is very, very, very subjective. I mean, almost completely subjective, except for you know the actual facts of you know how the mounting style, the material of the plate, you know the the longevity or the quality of the PCB, but all the rest of the stuff. I mean, I've pulled out keyboards that I think sound lovely out of the box, and I'll hand it to a friend and they'll be like, "Nah." Then I'll pull out keyboards that. I'm like, meh, and other friends will be like, hey, I like it. So there's a lot of subjectivity and trying to place your subjectivity on somebody else's, that's gatekeeping. I mean, if they like it and they're happy with it, that's fine. I just, I don't understand people that will literally, I mean, unfortunately, not only in this hobby, it goes along with many hobbies, but they'll literally attack a person making a choice that they wouldn't have made themselves so but you're like angry at the person for why did you buy that why did you put it like that why did you use those switches why did you use those keycaps why did you buy that because that's what they wanted it's their money they should spend it how they want i just i don't get the gatekeeping i really don't i mean if you're happy with it i mean it could be a 20 dollars keyboard that you spent two days on modding and it just sounds and feels like how you like it and especially you know the work you put into it so you have a certain sense of pride that hey i took this cheap 20 dollar keyboard and did all these mods and now it sounds and feels much better sounds like a much more expensive keyboard but i'm happy with it to the folks that want to spend seven eight hundred plus dollars on a keyboard if you got the money and you're not starving your kids or your family then Go for it if you're happy with it. I mean, that's that's the main thing about this hobby is you should be happy with what you have. You should be happy with what you're doing. It it's not it's you're not doing this hobby to please other people. You're doing this hobby because not only do you probably spend a good amount of time on the keyboards. It's myself, I code, and a lot of us, you know, whether it be gaming, whether it be coding, whether it just be filling out spreadsheets all day long. This is one of the most popular input methods. I mean, yes, I know there's keyboards on iPads and tablets and a lot of people moving towards that. But even that, if you're going to sit and need to type something out um, and I mean, yeah, you can get, a you know, the touch, the uh, vibration on your tablet or your phone whenever you press a key. But that's not real tactility because you're not feeling the keys. You can't just like, OK, home myself and then start going to town and even if you're not a touch typist you're still going to have more of a familiarity i mean unless you were born with a cell phone in your hand i my kids they've had cell phones since they were quite young and they do they when i see them type on a phone i'm just amazed at how fast they're like oh i mean i'm not slow by any means but they beat me any day. I mean, I I would assume that they're in the 60 to 70 word per minute range on a touchscreen keyboard. I think that's pretty uh pretty crazy in my opinion. But if you're happy with the keyboard, it's about you being happy. It's not about other people being happy. Now, don't get me wrong. I know people love to show off their builds. They have pride in them. And that's where that gatekeeping really just irks me. Why are you taking someone's happiness and pride and what they built and what they put together and what, you know, even if it's just choices of switches and keycaps on a bare bone keyboard, if they're happy and proud of it, well, kudos to them, you know, good job. But why would you go and, you know, poop on their parade? Why would you come? I mean, if you got nothing to say or you, if you have nothing nice to say, then just don't say anything at all enjoy the hobby for what it is and i enjoy this hobby i probably enjoy it a little bit more than a lot of people um because i do i love i i look forward to oh, what keyboard am i doing today when i have the chance and i mean don't get me wrong i still gotta code i still gotta get work done um and that's why i don't spend too much time with i mean flashiness or you know, B-roll. I mean, I do some B-roll and I do, you know, some nice shots, but I primarily just focus on making a connection. 
I'm not sitting here trying to make a commercial. Um, I'm not trying to sell keyboards. I am trying to provide an honest representation of the keyboards that I review. And I mean, obviously, a lot of that's based on my opinion. I do try to stick to facts. That's why I have my technical section or just the spec section so that, you know, I go with just the facts. And the rest of it is opinion based based on what I find. Um, obviously, we all have to sift through that and figure out what it is that we want and what we like. So I, I think that for me, this is a great keyboard. I love that it has a step caps lock option. I kind of wish that they would have included um, a step caps lock, but I will be coming back to this after we do all the plates and everything and do other switches and keycaps, probably some tactiles. I'll do with, with a cherry profile. We'll do some different things and see what kind of sounds we can get out of it. But with all the different mounting options, the different um, softness and hardness of the gaskets that we have. Um, and it, there's no, I looked through it, it's not PCB, it's all plate um, gaskets or top mount. So you have a lot of options in how you want your keyboard to feel. Uh, for me, having the step caps lock is usually enough. And in this situation, it is enough because then I can use my step caps lock. Because we have an F13, I would have loved to see the option for a Tsangan bottom row. I, I'm just a big fan of the Tsangan bottom row. Um, and it's not that hard. I mean, it's only doing a couple of flip switches on it. And I know the, the MCU can handle it. But for this being Nufi's first custom keyboard out of the gate, because, I mean, the Halo came pre-built, um, and really the only options was getting where to choose different switches and keycaps, this is a true gem. Uh, I really like this keyboard. Yes, TKLs are probably my favorite layouts, um, with 1800s coming close behind that and 65% close behind those. Um, I, I think this is a really good keyboard. Um, some will say, well, you know, it's aluminum, but it's got a plastic bottom and there's, you know, other keyboards that I can get. Yes. Can you get keyboards that are cheaper than this that are aluminum? Absolutely. Are you going to get this level of quality, true QMK, true VIA, um, so many options for mount? No, you're not going to get those. So when you compare the features of this, I think it's priced quite well, in my opinion. I think it's worth the investment, especially if you're this keyboard or something similar to this, even just a year ago, you would be looking at three times the price, even more probably because of all the options that it has. The fact that we have moved into a realm where custom keyboards can now be had fully built and complete for less than 200 bucks. I mean, come on. This is a, a brand new world, a brave new keyboard world. So I'm really happy about that. And also this keyboard does give you the option. You can get a wired only version. Barebone is $149. I can't, I can't complain about that price. Quite honestly, you have five beautiful choices. This one is the cosmic cosmic mocha. Then we have the Mystic Indigo, which is a lovely blue, which I was stuck between these two. But I have a, quite a few blue keyboards, and I don't have as many of these. So, I mean, I, could, I, I don't think I could have too many beige keyboards, retro keyboards. They also have it in the Obsidian Black. It's kind of more like a gray. They have it in an Airy Lilac, which is a lovely, um, you know, light purple. And then they also have it in a pink that actually comes with um, black keys with pink legends. So kind of like an Olivia or dark Olivia. Um, oh yeah, so the different switches they have are the mint switches. And it's 15 bucks for that that entire box. Um, of, was it over, a little over 100 keys or 100 switches? So 15 bucks for the switches? <laughs> it, that's a, that's a no-brainer. Um, the mint is this one, the linear. They have the raspberry and they have the lemon. Yeah, the lemon is that tactile one. And then we have the silent red clear tops. Now, those are 25 for this set. 
but those are silent switches and usually you pay a little bit more for silent switches now you do have the themed keycaps the past keycaps and the wave keycaps which are very very colorful so and then of course you can get when if you purchase it at the time you can get 50 percent off their different wrist rests and they have walnut beach black oak acrylic noir acrylic frosted they just have some really cool oh and now they have i, I did not notice this they have a uh, black desk mat or uh, they have well, desk mats that actually match the colors and they're 12 bucks if you buy it with the keyboard um the extra plates they have available aluminum 15 pc plate 12 palm plate 12. i mean that's that's a good price um, and then of course you can get some uh, extra switches if you want and they have the g pro g pro reds and g pro browns are 29 dollars and then if you want to get the extra switches on top of the ones you got with the keyboard, they're going to be $31.50 for $90. Oh, and they still have the baby kangaroos at $66. The baby raccoons at $66. Night Breeze, Rose Glacier, and the Polaris, as well as the Fleeting Gold for $38. So a lot of different choices. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and film the first of several sound tests. So we're going to be doing it stock completely with, well, I don't know exactly what the um, mounting that comes stock is. Let me see if it says here. They're called Omni mount because of the different, all the different options. Okay, so what they have installed by default is the silicone, the silicone sockets. Uh, gasket mount and it looks to be the softer one i think we had the hard ones in the pack so they probably have 30 so it's this is going to be one of the softer ones uh, the silicone beam slightly less bounce but more than the strip with two hardness options 30 and the 70. we have the silicone strip that they say is the most balanced feel choice and then we have the screw and silicone top mount for firmness and the silicones provide to be used with the screws so all right, and we have the bottom silicone layer, a PCB foam on top of that, a PCB foam on top of it, and then we have the sound dampener, which is the PET layer, the switch pad, which is the IXPE, and then the plate foam that goes between the plate and the PCB. I got to say, the prices on these extra plates is pretty good. So, um, yeah, let me go ahead and take care of the stock sound test. Then it's time to go ahead and jump on in here and see what we've got on the inside. I'm I'm loving this keyboard, and it's I keep adding keyboards to my daily drivers list. Uh, I think the week before last, I was switching out like twice a day. I just had so many good keyboards, and I'm like, well, I like this, this, this about this one. I like this, this, this about this one. But this one's definitely once I'm done building it, I'm going to figure out which one I prefer. And start using it as my daily and then i'll come back um like i said with different switches different keycaps and also like a review uh a, an after use review after i've been using it for a while but i gotta say so far i am loving it so let me go ahead and get the stock sound test out of the way and i'll be right back Well, I'll be the first to say that that sounded absolutely lovely. This is this is a nice sounding keyboard. Now we have all the different options. Now it's just a problem of choices. So we started off, let's come stop with the FR4 plate. As you may know, FR4 is going to be a little bit stiffer um, and provide for less flex. It can usually go a little bit deeper though not the deepest usually pc tends to lean deeper but whereas i would normally say let's go with the pc plate next i'm gonna switch it up i am gonna go all the way hard and then we can come down from there i'm gonna see what this sounds like 
with the aluminum plate. And since we have what I believe are the softer gaskets, I really love the packaging. Nufi has got packaging down pat since the first time I received one of their keyboards. I was like, oh, okay. So there's a lot of thought and effort put into that. So, and it translates to their keyboards, in my opinion, because, I mean, this is a toolbox. It is your keyboard do box for this one anyway. Um, but I think stock we have, I want to say it's got the softer ones. Yeah, they got the silicone sock. So here we have the hard ones. So since we've got a softer one on that and we've got socks, how about we go with, I don't know, I guess the silicone strips only come in the harder yeah so i want to try this then i will come back and do a top mount at some point but right now i'm just going to stick to gasket mounts with the different gasket systems so since we have a yeah well you know fr4 does flex it's just not the flex yes, but we have soft gaskets. I think for this first one, I'm gonna go hard, hard. So put these away. Got my containers for keycaps and switches. Let's go ahead and take all these off and then we'll get to opening it up. All right, so we've got all of the keycaps and the switches out. Now it's time to get in there. I'm just going to go ahead and use the tool they provided and not be lazy and use my electric driver. But it looks like we have a total of eight bolts, four on the top, four on the bottom. We'll see. They do look like they're probably the same length. Um, sometimes they're, they're uh, a little bit longer for the top and a little bit shorter for the bottom. Now, I never did open up any of the Halo series, though. <laughs> I actually, believe it or not, have all three on my video to-do list. But, unfortunately, I kept pushing them forward. Big reason why is that I like this the way they are. Yeah, I've switched out um, some keycaps and switches on them. But I just never found the need to like go in there and mod it though I really do want to but that one I consider more of a pre-built whereas this one in my opinion is more of a custom keyboard because you have so many options as to what since you have so many options as to what you can customize about the keyboard um, not only you know switches and keycaps but also the plates the type of mounting style, the softness or the hardness. So I believe that, that makes this more of a custom keyboard. I, I don't believe I ever saw a, a uh, aftermarket or a secondary plate for the Halo series. All right, well, these do not seem to be ferrous as they're not sticking. I really hate removing screws this way, but sometimes it's the only option unless you want to break out the tweezers and start pulling out the heads that way. I don't recommend this doing on a slippery table or a table that is not level as these will run away. I miscounted. One, two, three, four, five. There's there's ten bolts. I don't know how I missed that, but I was like, wait a minute, I've got nine, or I've got um, yeah, I've got nine on here. How come I've got more than I need? Or but I was mistaken. These are ten bolts. Five on the top, five on the bottom. I guess sometimes I just can't count. I just assume four is the, the most. But five is definitely well attached. All right. So we've got these guys out of the way, and we're gonna. Well, I guess there's no point putting it on that. I guess I'll go back to 
just sticking them on here. Since they're non-ferrous, meaning they're not magnetic, they're not going to stay on this pad. All right, now for the big reveal. Very gently slide the top off. We can see there we have the light diffuser as well as the magnet for that light badge. We do have a light diffuser here. But this is a decent um, piece of aluminum. It is on the thinner side and it is lighter. But I think it's, in my case, I think it fits just fine. Um, if it was any heavier, I don't know how that would affect the sound. So I think that I actually do have the hard ones on here. And these are just extras. So I'm guessing, because now I'm paying attention and there's only four in here. I'm going to assume these are four extra, and these are the hard ones that are on here. So, these are a hardness of 30. I know there's strips, but it doesn't seem that there's any um, hardness 30 silicone socks, um, unless I misplace them. I'm just going to go ahead and test this out. Let me pull off the plate. I like how easy it comes off. Now, I don't know why I thought these were... screw in stabilizers but they're not <laughs> they're plate mounted stabilizers and i should have known better i guess i just didn't see the notches now do we have the ability to add screw in stabilizer oh hmm. well thankfully these are good plate mounted stabilizers but that's honestly one thing i wish there was I wish that we had the option for screwing stabilizers. And I, I know that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be in that same kind of boat, uh, if you will. But I want to test to make sure that my assumptions are correct in this situation. They definitely look the same. How do they feel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are exact same one. Okay, so this this is extras in case you have lost them. Or I'm, I'm assuming you could probably just do like halves and get a, a medium. But I don't know if that would work. I know it works on some, but not all. I'm going to go ahead and remove these even though I'm taking the plate off. I don't want to lose them if I leave them on the plate. I must say I like these silicone socks. They're they're a lot um they're the tolerances are much better than others that I've dealt with uh because they actually stick to the plate. I also like that yes, I've been building keyboards for a while, but some people, you know, may not know the difference just by looking at it. I like the fact that they actually put the material on here and let you know that you're dealing with an FR4 plate. And I guess my camera just doesn't want to. Oh, there we go. So it's nice to... Little things like that. I mean, details. The devil's in the details. I'm going to go ahead and put these away. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and clip off these stabilizers. Yeah, I mean, the uh, tolerances on these are so good. Um, I... I can almost not fault them for not adding screw and stabilizers, though. I gotta say, with the design of this, I don't think it would have been difficult. Because the space is definitely there for the screw and stabilizers. Um, I don't know if that was a decision that was made for, you know, some other reason. But obviously here we can see the PET layer. Well, it's actually quite soft. I would say that's probably one mil. Even the PCB says PCB. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yes, just because we might know these things, there's people that don't know these things. So it's nice that they lay that out. This might be someone's first time ever opening up anything electronic. Give them labels. It doesn't really, I mean, to do a little extra watermark like that really isn't going to add much to the cost of manufacturing. 
I set you guys over here. And to release them, it's like any plate mounted stabilizers, you're gonna have these clips. That's what's locking them onto the plate. You just pull them up, unlock them, pull them up. Sometimes they will be upside down. Now with the space bar, we're gonna have to move, we're gonna actually have to remove these pads here. Oh, they, oh, okay, they just pop out. We are going to want to put those on the aluminum plate. That helps the ghost bar work even better. All right, so there is our FR4 plate. I was really trying to open this bag without tearing it, but I didn't do a very good job at it. Let me go ahead and put the FR4 plate in here. All right, now we've got the aluminum plate. Definitely, even though it's stiffer, because of the flex cuts, it actually has a decent amount of flex. Let me go ahead and put these in. For when you're doing plate mounted stabilizers, the side that the wire is on is where you want to line it up with the, the, the notch taken out of the plate. Because this is actually where it locks into. You want to make sure it goes in. goes down all the way on the plate and then give it a look, little extra help. That clip that we would that we use to unclip it, we want to make sure that it's fully engaged because that's the lock. This is some really good tolerances there. So again, they have definitely ensured that we have some good stabilizers because we don't have the option for screwing. So we always want to make sure that we're getting the plate into that little wedge right there. Because um, otherwise, they're not going to be properly attached. So it's a good thing to try to bring them in. Make sure that both sides are in the, on the plate on the right spot. So sometimes it can be a little tricky when the, the plate's not attached. It's actually a little easier with the plate attached. Right. and just ensure that they are freely moving and just to do a little bit of a side angle view the wire goes right underneath those tabs but we want to make sure that the mouth of the stabilizer is grabbing onto the plate and then we can press down lock these to make sure all the stabilizers are in place now it's time to use the silicone strip gaskets so we're going to be going i mean it's still gasket mount but it's a different type of gasket mount so we're mixing it up oh i thought these would go like this these actually go over huh okay they keep surprising me and i can't complain now i can definitely say these gaskets are much softer plastic so we're definitely probably going to get a little bit more flex overall. But like I said, we're mixing it up. Soft gaskets, but a harder plate material. And now we want to make sure all of these layers are lined up. So actually. All right. Just to take a quick peek under here. Um, I'm not going to be disconnecting anything, but it looks like we have three different JST connectors. I guess that one probably goes to the battery. That one probably goes to the daughter board. And that one goes to the switch daughter board. And we have a layer of what looks to be EVA foam with a layer of EVA foam with PET on one side. And we have the silicone layer that actually has a nice texture to it and our 4,000 milliamp hour battery. This is, uh, it's, I gotta say, it's nicely designed. It really is, in my opinion. So, 
at a later date, we will come and take this apart. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a tape mod to it. So I want to make sure everything is in place because it does fit in here this way. Everything we want to make sure is lined up. Next, we have our PET layer. And, oh, did I? I think I flipped it over. As there's some keyboards, I won't name them, but that do not come punched out and can cause some issues when installing switches. What does the PET layer do? It adds some poppiness. It keeps some of the tones muted, but it helps other tones come to light. It works really well in combination with the IXPE foam. And this is basically, I mean, it's for all intents and purposes, it's PE foam. It's just a spe specific thickness and grade. So um, it is a manufactured version of the PE foam mod. So with the combination of the two, it definitely adds a nice I want to say sound filter, but it's kind of both a sound filter and a sound amplifier because it does bring certain muted sounds that can come from switches. It can bring them to life. It might not make them super loud, but it's definitely going to make the sound of the switch and in the combination with the keyboard sound much clearer, more defined, and in my opinion, more pleasant. All right, a good way to make sure you got this all lined up is just to go to some random holes and make sure that they are in the center and they're nicely laid out. It's got a bit of a cling wrap, you know, static electricity, so it'll stick pretty good. Then we're going to go ahead and put on the IXPE the home layer. Same thing here. We want to make sure that it's lined up so it doesn't cause us any issues with switches. I guess that foam is more of a guide than anything else, but it could be kind of like a spring to make sure there's separation um, from the plate and the PCB since it doesn't use screws to mount the plate and PCB assembly. It uses the switches. We also do have a little bit of PET on one side of this. Um, I want to say this is poron, but yeah, I believe, I'm pretty sure it's poron, but I'll have to take a look. We put this on top, obviously making sure that everything still binds up. We want to make sure those lights come through the foam right there, as that's part of the top case design. And we've got clearance here as well. So that fits nicely. And then we put the plate on top. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're definitely, we've got flex overall. I don't think the plate's going to flex too much. But I'm interested to see, or I guess I'm interested to hear what it sounds like. Now that we've got that there, let's go ahead. Slide this on top. Everything seems to be lined up properly. So let's go ahead and close it back up. I like to screw it in caddy corner. Hold one corner in, start the screwing, but not all the way. 
and go down to another corner. And just make sure the screw is in the threads and start the turn. Down to another corner. This is my own way of not only keeping everything lined up, but also helping to ensure that I'm not going to um, strip any screws. A lot less likelihood. All right, now that all the screws have gotten started, I'm just going to put some light pressure from above to make sure that the case is all the way together. All right. Looking good, looking good. I, I gotta say, I I used to be kind of anti-aluminum plates, but I started to grow a fondness for them. I don't, they're not my favorite yet anyway, but I'm growing fonder of them every time I use them. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and load up the same switches we're going to keep it even for this video when i come back to it we'll do different switches different keycaps um maybe some mods maybe take out the foam maybe take out just the pt and ixp to see what it sounds like there's a lot of things i plan to do with this keyboard because it is quite interesting it is quite nice and i do i do think that this is going to be a good recommendation for newcomers who really want to dive in and they want to start with a board that is going to be easy as far as understanding you know things they haven't dealt with yet but also at a reasonable price value for everything that comes available with it so let's go ahead and load up the switches and the keycaps then we can get to talking about how it sounds and doing a sound test of it Well, I gotta say, that actually sounded phenomenal. Different than I expected with the aluminum plate, but it was much softer than I'm used to with aluminum plate. Now, obviously, the construction and everything else about this makes that difference, but even though these switches are a little bit lighter, I'm very confident that I could get this to sound even deeper. It already does. And aluminum usually tends to lead more towards a clacky tone, but this is more like a creamy, marbly, almost stocky tone, in my opinion. And that space bar, yeah. <laughs> thing is just quiet. This one, I think, I, yeah, I, I didn't have it pressed down all the way. That's why it sounded a little bit off. I'm still, I mean, these plate mounted stabilizers are nice. But I'd really like to know why they forewent, even though it looks like there's spaces for them, like they originally had planned putting in the holes for screw and stabilizers, but for some reason or another decided not to go with it. Could be because of the plates. I mean, the plates have to be slightly different to accept both plate mounted and um, screw and stabilizers below them. So that's the only thing I could think of though I am going to reach out and I'm going to ask because I will be definitely coming back to this keyboard but um the flex on this obviously is a lot less even though we have the softer gaskets on here um the strip gaskets there is still some flex but it's definitely not in the realm of what it was preloaded with the FR4 plate so I really, I really, really like this keyboard. As far as customs go, I mean, right now it's on pre-sale, and I think they start shipping, I want to say sometime in February, and then it's just going to be an in-stock product. So I think they're just, the pre-orders are more just to get an idea of 
how much interest there is so they know how much to pre-order for stock. Um, but Newfi has always come through with their pre-orders, so this isn't like a group buy pre-order. As far as a custom keyboard goes that is currently pre-order but is going to be in stock after this month, this is a lovely keyboard. All right, so we still got a couple more plates. We did the FR4 plate. It was very nice. Yes, yes. I'm liking the aluminum plate so far. My favorite is PC, but Palm is close behind it. So why not go ahead and do Palm for our second plate? And we'll start with the Deans. All right, so with the Palm plate, we definitely have a much flexier plate. Because we're doing this, I'm thinking, let me pull out my Nufi toolbox. Since we went with a soft one on this, how about we go with Hardness 7 silicone beam with this one. We're going to go ahead and find the silicone strip bag. We'll put these here. We're going to go with this one. Let's set this aside for the moment. All right. So let me go ahead and do this one more time. Let's go ahead and pull off the switches and the keycaps so that we can go ahead and get in there and replace the plate. Now that we've got the uh, switches and the keycaps taken out, let's go ahead and open it up. Um, that's one thing that I think that 10 screws, in my opinion, is a little overkill. And I'll be honest, I, I would have liked to have seen a different opening system. I mean, other keyboard manufacturers have been coming up with like the latch system or the magnetic system, something that allows me to get in there a lot quicker or just four screws or you know i mean it's just 10 seems a bit much to me also the fact that these are non-ferrous um seems an odd option to me uh i mean i should be able to pick it up with a magnet that's just gonna make it a lot easier why these are non-ferrous uh I mean, perhaps because they colored them gold, but they, I've seen gold-colored bolts and screws that are ferrous and are easily magnetized. So, it just, I mean, it's not a no way, shape, or form is it a deal-breaker for me. It's just one of those things that makes me question why they didn't do it. So, again, we pull off the top. A nice aluminum top. It's light but sturdy. Now, the plate, I, I, I gotta say, though, I like the fact that, I mean, this is pretty simple. I mean, in most situations, I don't think it's necessary to make the plate, um, you know, screwed in to the PCB. I think it being loose uh, actually provides for a little bit more flex, and I think it sounds better because you're not going to have that stiffness in there. Now... Would I have liked to see seen some, you know, tabs on the PCB so that these silicone beans could be used in there so we could do a plateless build? Yeah, there's a few things I would have liked to see, but for what we're getting, I think we're still way above the curve for most of the custom and stock keyboards that are out there. All right, so... Just set this down while I go ahead and... What? I ain't got time. I'm busy. Can't you see I'm filming? What? It's It's been like 20 minutes since I gave you treats. Do you need treats again? Cats are very demanding. Just a bit easier to do the stabs both... Uh, removing and installing them when they're actually just sitting on the plate or when they're sitting on the PCB as it's easier to get leverage on them so that you can pull them out. 
these are obviously a little bit different because we got to pull the uh, dampeners out. And we're going to go ahead and collect the gaskets. Again, these are nice and soft. I love that even though they're on there, just slipped on there, they're actually attached pretty well. They don't feel like they're going anywhere, and they're not going to fall off when I'm building the keyboard. There's too many that I've dealt with that as soon as you start adding them, I mean, even the soft ones that will just you know you go to put it in place and then two or three of them fall out so you have to not only make sure you're lined up but make sure those socks don't fall off because they're so loose the tolerances are quite loose all right so let's go ahead and store these all right so now we got the palm plate first things first let's go ahead and install the beans silicone beans eight of these and I'm going to assume that they go in the middle like that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's how they go. Right in the middle of the plate. Let's see if you can uh, get a good look at that. So go ahead and install these gaskets. I got to say, I do love the fact that there's three different type of gasket mounts as well as top mounts. See, just as we have uh, eight gaskets, four in the top, four in the bottom, I think we could have done with four screws just as well. But that is just me. All right. So there's actual, like, almost like a screw hole for those bottom... I want to call them tadpoles. I don't know necessarily why they call them beans, but, I mean, I get it. They look like little beans, but beans are, well, more shaped more like kidneys, in my opinion. Now, this definitely has flex. I want to make sure that all of these are where they're supposed to be. So let me go ahead and load up the stabilizers. Yeah. All right. So now we ensure everything is nice and centered. It appears to be. These appear to be in their respective spots. We definitely got some flex on this, I must say. All right, let's stick the screws in. Oh, put into this keyboard. <laughs> a design team definitely thought about a lot of things. Again, I'd love to know the reason why, because it, to me it looks like they were going to add screw and stabilizers in it for some reason or another. That was changed. Why? I don't know. All right, let's get these loaded up real quick. I do want to say I'm very impressed with the tolerances on these plates. Um, they have been loose enough to allow the switch to go in easy, but they still hold on to the switch just fine. But... And here we are loaded up. We are using the uh, the beans and we're doing the uh, silicone beans with the hardness of 70, which is the harder ones. But we have the palm plate on here. So we have, it's I'd say it's similar to the FR4 um, flex. It's a little bit more than the aluminum. Um, but it's not as flexy as one would think, being as, as how the plate is, because probably if it's silicone beans now. Sound seems to be just slightly on the higher end, but you still have that nice crunchy feel to it, or not crunchy feel, but crunchy sound. I mean, the keystrokes are nice and smooth. Um, I am every plate combination that I do, I'm like, okay, this one's my favorite. Nope, not this one's my favorite. I think this is my favorite so far. Like I said, uh, PC plates are usually my favorite favorites. That's why I've less, left it to last. So um, I think that I think this one is going to, 
I think this one's going to be right up there, but I'm going to bet that probably the PC plate's going to be my favorite, though. Any one of these plates, I would be happy with. If I only had one plate, I, I would not complain. The only thing I wish is that I had the other switches available right now. Like I said, I'm going to reach out um, to Newfie and see if I can request the other switches. As with the Halo, I was able to get all the switches that came out with the Halo so that I could do sound tests. And I did sound tests with each and every one of them. Um, if I were to get the switches, I would do the same thing. I would probably try to match plate to switches. But if I could, I'd probably do a video of each switch with each plate. As much work as that is, I think it'd be worthwhile to present all the different combinations that you can add. So, again, uh, I'm loving the construction. I wish it had less screws. I wish it had more optional layouts. But again, at least it has a step caps lock, which is my friend. And we have the F13. And of course, we have QMK and VIA with eight layers, so we're going to be able to program to our heart's desire. And this keyboard could easily be a replacement for a full size, um, because especially you could set up some of these keys right here to act as the numpad and do like a toggle, so that you toggle into it when you need the number pad, and then you toggle out of it to get back to the primary layer. So I am... I, I'm just... I'm really liking this keyboard. I know we're early into 2024, but this is already a contender in my book for keyboard of the year. Not only because of its affordable price, but because of all the options that you have. Not only from, I mean, the case colors, you got five different colors, four, five different colors to choose from. But the plates, you have you know, the four primary plates to choose from. And it comes with an FR4 plate, which I think is a nice medium ground between, say, an aluminum and PC plate. Um, and the plates are 15 bucks. I mean, come on. To add switches and keycaps is extremely... I mean, if you're buying... When you're buying it, to add the switches and the keycaps is extremely affordable. So for under $200, you can get a keyboard that is really going to deliver an experience to you that even a year ago, would have been two or three times the price of this one. And that's including ship. So right now I'm going to go ahead and do the sound test. We have the silicone beans, the hardness of 70, and we have the palm plate. Of course, still using the um, mint switches, the lighter linear switches. So let's go ahead and do that and see what it sounds like. I'll, I'm going to just be doing little clips of the sound test and then in the end, I'll do sound. There will be sound tests for all of them, as well as well as separate videos for each one for the full, and then I'll do a super cut between them so you can kind of hear side by side. So right now, let's go ahead and get to the sound test of the Gem 80, and this truly is a gem in my book. I think they picked the perfect name with the palm plate and the silicone beans with the hardness of 70. We'll be right back. Well, I have to say that was a little bit poppier and more lively than I expected it to be. Whereas I thought the aluminum weight would bring more of that out, that more poppy, a little bit higher pitched, maybe even clacky. I think it, it came out more in this. It's kind of throwing me off a little bit because usually these plates produce different sounds. So... Like I said, there's a lot of engineering going on, and some of this may force me at least to rethink how materials sound. Um, part of it, I do believe, is the construction. I've always found, and I've been saying this for a while, you can go back to some of my first videos, that I would like to see more keyboards with the combination. This was before I even did the Halo, but the combination of aluminum and ABS or PC plastic, I think the two combined together in a perfect balance can deliver some of the widest ranges of sound tones 
So if you want to go clacky or you want to go thocky or you want to go marble or you want, you know, the, the Mahjong tile, I think when you're combining the two materials like this in a way where they, the form and function are both, you know, properly addressed and there's a balance between the two, I think that you really can start reaching some really nice tones. Um, I think mods would help, but I think a lot of it is just a combination of the different materials, the switches, um, how much foam you're using, so on. So I, I'm honestly happily surprised with how this palm plate sounds. I've got to say, I'm really, um, I want to make me other ones. I really like that badge. I don't know. It's like a cat sometimes. I just wander off. My attention span <laughs> goes elsewhere. Anyway, I'm, I, right now, the palm has now reached the top of my list. But let's see what we get when we use what I would like to consider one of my favorite plate materials, PC. Now, with this PC plate, I think I'm going to go ahead and go all out to go soft and go with the 30 hardness beans. So it's going to be a soft plate with the softest um, silicone beans. I do kind of like this bean stout. I mean, it's flexy, but it's not super flexy. But I'm curious to see what this is going to do along with this. All right, so here we have the PC plate, and it's an even flexier than the palm plate that we have in there. Um, usually, on average, PC plate helps to deliver deeper tones. So I'm curious. We're still going to get that crunchiness. But I wonder how much deeper, or if it'll go higher. Who knows? Like I said, this is making me rethink how these materials work together. All right, so first things first. Let's do this one more time. Take off the key caps and the switches, and then we'll come back to open it up and replace. Go ahead and take the top cover off and set this aside. Now we're going to want a bag of the... We put the harder ones on here. They seem to be a darker gray, whereas the lighter ones seem to be more of a clear plastic we'll go ahead and pop the plate off go ahead and grab these beans and they are tiny and they're rubbery so be careful because they will bounce but thankfully they gave us some extra ones and we're going to go ahead and install the softer the 30 silicone beans on so like with the other ones, we want to find the middle ridge. We want to go ahead and push it on in. Find the middle ridge, push it on into a little groove. All right, so it looks like we go this way. So we'll go ahead, line up the top case. And press down. All right. All right. Mm, that's pretty flexy, but I'm going to guess that if we did the uh, silicone um, strips, gaskets, they would probably allow for a little bit more flex. I think the beans kind of, I mean, they give you the flex, but the flex, most of it's in the plate. Because at the bean, while there is some flex there, it's not as much give, I think, because they're a little bit more substantial. I'm going to go ahead and load up switches and keycaps, and we can get to the sound test, take a quick look at the software, well, via, and, um, and get to my closing thoughts. All right, so here we are with the loaded Gem 80. This time we're using the polycarbonate plate and the bean, the silicone beans 30 hardness, which is the softer ones. Um, we definitely have flex. It's not crazy. We're not on a trampoline, but it 
definitely is on the deeper tone, on the deeper side of things. And I think this is, I kind of left it to last because I just had, I just, I had the instinct that this was going to be my favorite plate. Now, I like all of them and the aluminum plate very much surprised me. It left me with a new appreciation for aluminum plates. I got to be honest, the way that it sounds on here, it's great. I can think of several switches that paired in a combination with the aluminum plate would just even make this board pop. Again, I am going to reach out to Nufi and I'm going to ask uh, if I can go ahead and get the other switches so that I can do these combinations, you know, basically go through the combinations of all of the plates, all of the gaskets, and do each switch in each of the plates with the gaskets. So then we literally can have, I mean, we're looking at, I mean, they got four, I wouldn't do the silence. I would just do the three colored ones. So three and basically four plates and four different mounting styles. So oh, eh, probably about 36 roughly uh, different combinations in there that we could do so we could i think that would help a lot of people to decide help decide what plate and switch combination do they want to get uh because it'll i think produce almost kind of like a rainbow of sound profiles uh because there's going to be so much difference between you know a heavier linear lighter linear the tactile um and heck i could even do the silent switches but uh perhaps i mean Silent switches, maybe just one per plate. Uh, I think they're using silent cherry reds. If not, I can always use, I have a handful of different silent switches we could use, and they're probably going to be, at least sound similar, pretty quiet. Um, I'm also interested to hear what maybe a, a half silent switch would sound like in here, like the U4TX, um, and I'm sure I will get to that at some point. So right now, let me go ahead and take care of the um, sound test with the polycarbon the pc plate and the softer silicone beans as the gasket mounting um i'll we'll also do the top mount when we come back next time um, but then we'll come back take a look at via real quick um, take a look at the options that they have on the website and i'll provide my closing thoughts then i will leave all of the sound tests in a row because right now you're just going to get just little clips just to you know savor but always remember there's chapters down below so you can jump to where you want to jump to if you'd like to go ahead and hear the entire sound test after I've made the modification. But let's go ahead and get the, the sound test out of the way for this last sound test for the Gem 80 for today, because we will be coming back to it um, and get to the rest of the video. Be right back. Well, I must say, I am now left in a bit of a quandary between which one I, I prefer. It's between the PC plate and the aluminum plate with the palm plate being close behind. Um, not that I didn't like the FR4 plate, but I mean, you got to pick favorites. You got to stop somewhere. Um, I really like how this sounds. I can't wait to get some tactile switches in there. Um, I really think that this combination, uh, probably with the softer gaskets and some U4TXs, as well as maybe some MT3 caps or even some XTA caps, I think I could bring a lot of sounds out. I, I want to almost treat this as a musical keyboard and find all the tones that I can bring out of it just with the smallest of combinations i think like i said between the combination of the aluminum top uh the pc i believe it's pc but it could be abs bottom i'm pretty sure it's pc the foams that are used i mean i am going to change out the foam configurations and i will do a fully foamless and i may do that with some clickies as a matter of fact so basically to get to the via file for this and i'm hoping that they're going to be integrating it so this will not need to be done in the future but for right now if you receive it and use via.app still does not recognize your keyboard 
you're going to want to go to the Newfi website, go to any page. You want to go to the footer, and one of the options in the footer is going to be console. Once you press on, when you go, once you follow that link, you'll go to the console page that'll have some listings in there. You're going to want to choose the one that is for the Gem 80 that lists via configurator. That's going to take you to another page that kind of gives you the instructions I'm going through right now. But on the number two instruction, it says download the correct JSON file at New Fee's website. And that'll take you to yet a third page, which says JSON files for New Fee keyboards. Um, it has the Air Series on there, and it also has the Gem 80. That's where you're gonna download a compressed file um, which is just basically going to contain the JSON file inside of it. You want to make sure to extract the JSON file that's in there and make sure that you know where you put it. Because once you do that, you want to go ahead and open up VIA. If you do not have the design tab, it looks like a little paintbrush and it should be the third one from the left. You want to go to the little cogwheel settings tab and you want to enable the switch for show design tab. Once you've enabled that, then you can go back to the design tab and you can load either drag and drop the JSON file or hit load and find the file in your um, settings, wherever you may have downloaded it to. And once you open that up, it's going to want to authorize again with the keyboard. You go ahead and authorize it, connect, and the keyboard's going to load up. Now, one thing that you're gonna notice is layer zero has the Macintosh configuration. This is the layer you're going to be in when you select the Mac switch on the back. Layer two is going to be your default layer one Windows mode. Um, it's the way that a few of these companies have handled um, being able to do the Windows and the Mac layers. I do believe from what the configuration shows it appears that four five six and seven should work in any mode but that basically zero and one are for mac two and three are for windows and then the other layers i'm not sure how they get split up I'd, i'll have to do more testing on that but that's how you go ahead and get it working in via i also went and looked for the qmk source um i found a github uh, thread um, for a pull request now, this was from last year, but this was for the V2 series of the Air keyboards they came out with. And at first, they hadn't shared the code, but they have created their own fork that currently includes the source files for uh, the, the three Air series keyboards, the um, 65, the 96, the 75. I believe those are the models. Um, so you can go and see the source for it there. I'm going to assume that the source for that one will be in that same repository so i'll put a link down at the bottom but i'm also going to reach out to newfie and ask them you know is it something that people can expect to find once you know they're receiving the keyboard in their hands because for a lot of people that's important um it'll allow you to i mean if you want to do per key rgb um, i'm guessing this mcu is more than capable of doing that but you can program it in the uh, in the rgb change the colors of what the caps lock are you could do a lot more um, configuration uh, with QMK. You can also create codes that you can call from the via key map in order to, you know, activate those, uh, especially like if you want to, you know, create some predetermined um, per key RGB layouts. Anyway, what are my thoughts on it? All right. First, I want to go just to in, into a couple of little things that I wish were done different. I don't, they're not deal breakers for me in any way shape or form but they're just things that i i i wish they would have done um it would have been nice to see something more than just a caps lock alternate layout now i know alternate layouts are not the easiest thing but at least with the keycap set that comes with you know this this is the themed one for this specific the mocha um why isn't there a step caps lock if step caps lock is actually one of the keys that I can actually choose a layout for. I'm a big fan of step caps lock and especially with this and I'm going for the retro look. I think it would be perfect. Um, it also would have been nice, maybe a split backspace, maybe a split shift, 
maybe a split space bar. Uh, maybe it's a sing in bottom row uh, because we have the F13, so we have more than enough space. Those are little nitpicks. Can I use it this way? Absolutely. Those are things that I would have liked to see. But again, those are things you usually will see in more pricier boards, though they've been coming to more budget boards. I can name a few that have those options that are in this price range, not pre-built, just, you know, kits. But so that that's like, again, that's uh, me nitpicking uh, because I really can't find anything that I like. Mm, that might be a deal breaker for me with this keyboard. This is truly... I mean, at first, I, I, I'll i be honest, the cynic in me said, Jen, uh, kind of patting yourself on the back a little too quick there. But now, I fully agree with the name of it. It is a gem. It's it's a for everything that it offers and for the price that it is. Um, and coming from a company that, I mean, has been very consistent in their products, in their support. Um, there's a lot of people that I interact with online, either through YouTube or Reddit or other forums that have actually purchased Nifi products because of my reviews. And um, they all still sing their praises. They all really enjoy it. And when I have some friends that come over that, you know, like, oh, it's a new keyboard to check out. And they, one of the ones that will stand out to them are the Halo series. Now, don't get me wrong. This one, it doesn't have a bland design. It has a more blend in design, but I still love, uh, you know, it has that wedge design, but I love the clear bottom on it. Uh, I do wish they would have used less bolts or screws, um, but I do like the hidden switches. Uh, I'm usually not going to mess with them as I don't go wireless all that often, but that's another thing. This is, while it feels very substantial, does not feel too light or, or like a toy or anything, um, it's still light enough that it's going to be easy enough to throw into a bag and take it with you and you're going to have basically i mean this to me the only thing that i would like but that's just me is a knob but i can live without a knob plus i can always program into a tap layer mute so i mean i'm just going to have to press an extra key to get to a mute real quick that's just my biggest thing is being able to quickly mute something but um, well, and again, I don't ever use screen lock, so I could just make screen lock mute and unmute. So that's not a big deal for me. And then if I really wanted to, I could go ahead and I would probably uh, program a, a key to take me, to toggle me into a layer that would allow me to do um, a numpad, basically. Though, I mean, I, I've i been in many situations where I don't have a numpad. And while I don't like entering numbers this way, I can make it work. So, I mean, like I said, those are those are minor things. What do I like about it? Uh, wow, top mount, numerous gasket mount, um, easy to get in and out. Even though, yes, we're dealing with ten bolts, it's still nice and easy. It's built well. Um, I like how the light designs are both here and here. You kind of got a little bit more even though you have actually there's lights for the caps lock so when i come back i have some windowed step cap locks um so we're going to see what that looks like but this will also change color if you have the caps on which is a good indicator um it has some pretty good lighting options already um i i just can't speak enough to how well it's constructed how easy it is i mean i took this apart and put it back together numerous times here for this speed test and for you know looking inside of it and seeing what it is and it was it wasn't as painful as i expected it to be not that getting into a keyboard is painful but, but doing something repetitively can sometimes be a little stressful this was an absolute pleasure it was easy it was simple enough and i enjoyed myself um i like how well it's built i like the feel of it i like the sound of it I like that the layers are of foam and PET are are already punched out, and they're in a way that I could move them in and out, and I wouldn't have to worry. I don't. I don't think I'd have to worry too much about getting things back in place. Um, it was really meant, um, and it's a build in a way that I feel that you could open this and close it many, many times, 
you're not going to have any issues. So just real quick going over the options that we have if you're interested in this keyboard again it is a pre-order that is set for starting I believe they're going to start shipping on the 23rd of February uh, for the most part and if he has kept with their dates and a few times they've actually been early. So if you want just a wired only version of this keyboard it's going to start at 149.95 Barebone. Now, you do have five colors that you can choose from. There's the Cosmic Mocha, there's the Mystic Indigo, the Obsidian Black, the Airy Lilac, and the Inca Rose. I gotta say, I am really wanting that Mystic, Mystic Indigo. Um, so, I may have to end up buying another one. No, no, I have too many keyboards. Stop, stop, stop. That's how much I like this. Really, this is now, this has become my favorite TKL. I, it was another one two weeks ago, and a month before that was another one, but I, I, I just, I can't help it. I mean, it's just, it's a good keyboard. Anyway, switches that you can choose from when you're building it, if you're going ahead and ordering it right now. I don't know if these prices will change once it's out of pre-order. I don't think they will, but I can't say anything for sure. Um, they have the mint switches, the raspberry switches, or the lemon switches. To add a whole box like we saw at the beginning, it's $15. So that's, um, and it was a little over 100 switches. I want to say it was like 108 switches. Uh, I can't recall, but I want to say it was at least 100 switches. So, and then for $25, you can do silent red clear tops. I'm going to assume there are probably Gator on, but I'm not sure. There's also some extra um, keycaps that you can choose from if you want to add as well as if you're purchasing with this keyboard you can get 50% off of their two-tone wrist rest which I I can't vouch for them enough I really like them in my opinion wrist rest should not be soft it kind of defeats the purpose of providing a firm lever for your hands to be um, soft hurts my wrist I don't know about others but Anyway, um, they also have the plates. You can get the, I mean, the prices of the plates. It comes with the FR4, but if you want to get the aluminum, it's 15 bucks. Both the PC and the palm plate are $12 each. I mean, that's cheap. Compared to custom keyboards, that is cheap for a plate. Um, and I, it's, it's a good price. It, in my opinion, it is a good price. So, like I said, they're taking pre-orders right now. Um, the pre-sale is between January 4th and February 18th. And then they're going to, they're hoping to, their estimated shipping date for all orders placed before the 18th of February is going to start on February 23rd. Uh, then from there, I don't know where they're going to take stock. I'm going to assume by what I've heard from people in the Newfie subreddit, that this is a popular board already and um, I think people are going to be pleasantly um, surprised not necessarily surprised but they're gonna be they're gonna be happy with what they get if they ordered this for what they pay I think they're gonna be happy because there's like I said there's not much and whatever I'm I have as a dig or as a you know a nitpick it's it's so minor and it doesn't it doesn't stop me from wanting to use the keyboard. I actually, I want to play with it more. I want to try some tactile switches. Um, I want to try every profile of keycap on here. I want to do a Tempest tape mod. I want to try it with different foams. I want to take all the foams out and put some clickies in there. I want to do many things to this keyboard. And I don't mean that in a dirty way. I really don't. So, um, I hope that you guys have enjoyed uh, my take on the new feature M80. Uh, I will be coming back to this keyboard. So for all of you that have any interest or anything you'd like for me to take a look at specifically or perhaps a mod that you'd like to see me do when I come back to this keyboard, please put them down in the comments below. I read them all and I like to get conversations going. So. For now, I'll go ahead and leave you with full sound test of each of the combinations we did today. I do hope that you enjoyed my take on the new Fiend Gem 80, and we'll be back soon enough. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.